I'm Pete Hobby. We're at the cabin in West Virginia. It's a little cabin where we play music in Hampshire County. Um, it's on Paul Roomsburg's land, but it's kind of a community building that's open to whoever wants to use it whenever they want to use it for old time music. Yep. And I'm Dakota Carper. I'm his daughter. So we're always happy when we're at the cabin. We're playing uh, old time music, which is sort of a cousin to bluegrass. Um, old time music was the uh, music played traditionally on a porch like this. Somebody would sit on their back porch and they would uh, be playing their banjos and the fiddles and um, it was sort of a precursor to a lot of the mainstream music that we hear now during a time when travel was difficult. Um, you wouldn't necessarily always have a full band with all of the nice sounds our ears are used to, the bass and the violins and everything in between so somebody would pull out whatever instrument they had sometimes just their voice and they would play the songs that were passed down from person to person here in these mountains and it's now known as old time music so and a lot of the music that traditionally is played in this this style was built around a fiddle and a banjo because that's what was available to the early homesteaders. They, they would craft some sort of a fiddle, some sort of a banjo, and some of the early renditions are, are pretty crude, but they, they made music for, for people sitting in their living room or on their porch or whatever. They, nothing fancy or polished. And there wasn't, surprisingly, there wasn't a lot of guitars because that was something that was a little bit more difficult to, to build, you know, just whatever was laying around. I grew up in Northern Virginia, and one night, in the middle of the night, I was listening to WGTB, and they had this old-time music show on, and I heard this band called the Critton Hollow String Band. I remember, as I was maybe 17, 18 years old, thinking, God, someday I would love to play music like that with people. You know, it's like, it was, it was this bizarre thing I'd never heard. And fast forward 20 years, we moved out here to Hampshire County, West Virginia in 1988. And I met this other young couple at the time and got to talking to them. And I remember the gentleman, Joe Herman, telling me, oh uh, yeah, we're in this, we play music, we're in this band, uh, it's called Critton Hall String Band, and it floored me. It's like, really? You know, it's <laughs> like, I've been thinking about this for years and connected with them and they introduced me to some of the other people in the area. And that's when we started bringing Dakota around, and she was just learning, but we'd set her in the middle of the room and say, you know, play what notes you can find. I was eight when I started playing, and I uh, actually began with classical lessons. And I, very shortly after that, started taking old-time lessons from Joe Herman, actually. Um, and coming to the cab and learning things by ear, and I would go to my violin lesson and she'd say, oh, you're holding your violin funny now. You've been playing with those fiddlers, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> so there was sometimes conflicts in those two worlds of music, but there's a lot of harmony that was created through them too. So, so the, the original cabin from the 1800s was a log cabin and it was taken apart at a different site and carried to this, this location by oxen and re-put together again. And uh, about 10 years ago, we took up a collection amongst all the different musicians that play here to buy the materials and uh, I kind of pre-cut everything and one day we stood up this room and the back porch and the front porch and the kitchen, which you'll see as we walk through, all in one day, had a big party and played music in it that night. It was, it was a big time. When I played with an orchestra for a short while, I would, go, I would be given a piece of music and I had to learn it and then I sat next to people I didn't know and we played for a performance and then it was over. When I go to an old-time jam, I show up 
not knowing what we're gonna play. <laughs> and then I sit down in a room and people ask me how my day was and how's it going and how's life. And, and people care about you and know you when you're part of old time music. I think that that was, um, that's been just a very important part of old time music to me that's, that's kept me coming back. What's interesting with, with old time music and, and the, the old time scene, um, there's, there's really no aisle to reach across. When, when you're sitting in a circle of people playing music, they're from all different backgrounds and beliefs and you know, political stances, whatever, all that stuff is gone. It doesn't matter. You know, I, I play with and have played for years with people who are radically different from me or I'm radically different from them or whatever, but it doesn't matter at all. It's all about the music, it's all about the music. So this is the original room of the cabin. We've had, believe it or not, as many as 30 people in here at one time playing music and the whole floor actually bounces when, when you get that many people tapping their foot at the same time. There's no electricity. We light it with kerosene lights and kind of heat it with that wood stove there, depending upon how cold it is. We've got a few things around this, this fiddle right here is one that everybody that comes and plays music in the cabin signs this fiddle. And if you've been here over many times, you just put down the year after your name so you don't have to put your name on it each time. It, just little things like that to make it special. It's, it's fun stuff. Cut if you need to. <laughs> <laughs>